Alrighty, folks. We're out on Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday. What is the date? The fifth, fourth, fourth. Today's the fourth. I think today's the fourth. Okay, fourth of October. And I am doing what I do after almost every storm, hurricane, tropical depression. I'm testing the water salinity because I've caught the trout where they've been bottlenecked up in a certain spot. Now, I'm going to show you what we do here because not many people would even think of this or ever do it. We just left down by the boat ramp and the water, I'm hoping you're going to be able to see this. You fill this thing up and it gets the specific gravity of the salinity. Let me pull forward here. God damn, we keep running into this buoy. And it's October 5th. October 5th. Okay. I don't even know what day it is. It blew like, what, 20 knots plus in the last two days. So we were supposed to go out yesterday, me and Traveler Bob, and we decided... Well, I decided in my driveway while I was watching the palm fronds of a tree just bowing over my driveway. Not a good idea, Bob. So today it's 5 to 10 or 10 or something and tomorrow too. All right. This is an instant ocean hydrometer. People that have saltwater fishing tanks will be very familiar with this. Okay. We just left the boat ramp area and it was up here on a 22. That's 22 parts per thousand of salinity, PPT. And then over on this side, on the inside here, is the specific gravity. I'm hoping you're going to be able to pick this up. I, I'm using my GoPro 4 here. I can't really tell. But you see where this is pointing. It's about, uh, right now, about an 11. So we just ran four miles, five miles down the river, and it went from a 22 down to an 11. And that's the, that's the test of the salinity right off the surface of the water, of the river. So I'm going to test it if we start catching. I'm going to test it. But you can pick these things up. They're relatively cheap. This is really the best one is this instant ocean. They've got all kinds of other horse shit looking ones that are goofy, but this right here is the one. They use them at the bait shop, even, to uh, test the salinity of the water that's in the, in, the, uh, in the shrimp tanks and stuff like that. So, it is a thing. And the thing will help you after the storms and stuff. Now, like I said, it was like a four or a six. And I was just telling Bob years ago, me and a guy named Kirk Mundell, which was a awesome fisherman, very serious guy. He was a captain in the United States Navy. And we caught trout one after another downriver in a four to six parts per thousand. Well, let me equate that back to reality. Lake Pontchartrain in Louisiana between Slidell and New Orleans is some of the fastest, most ferocious trout fishing known to man. Okay? And their highest salinity level in Lake Pontchartrain may be a 10. A 10. That's high here the you go out to the jetties because it's right there at the ocean it's usually a 28 so that'll that'll tell you right there the trout like salt and fresh mixed all estuarine species love it but in for, unfortunately in Jacksonville you'll never get it because we have hyper saline in this river because they are letting the ocean 
all the way down the river from the inlet all the way to downtown, which is 20 something miles. So we're gonna run down and we're gonna try a couple spots. And if we're catching, I'm gonna test it again and see what it turns out to be. So that's something you may never have heard of before. And I'll let you know. I know you all probably can't see it, but I'll point. One, two, three, wild baby pigs, not big ones, walking on the beach right next to that pole that's white on the top. And this is an island, but they're out scrounging around. You don't see them often. Oh, look, at one of them just picked up a piece of styrofoam or something. Oh, now they hear us. They're kind of going up into the woods. Black wild pigs right up here on this island. This is only like the third or fourth time I've ever seen them. And they're always right in here when I do see them. All right, let's do a salinity test again. We just ran a couple more miles. And the reason I'm doing this is, of course, after the hurricane, it was an 11 and now we're below 10. So now we're about eight, about eight parts per thousand now. And all we did was go another two miles down the river. So that shows you how important this really is. The tide's not doing much, but we're going to try to fish here. And see the tide's mega high up here. We're underneath the Dames Point Bridge. There's our big bridge. Yes, sir. All right, that's a keeper. That's actually Bob's second fish. His first one was a pinfish that got stabbed through the eyeball. So that's a nice mangrove. Bob's using his just grab it glove. I was using mine in my garage. That's where it's sitting on my workbench. <laughs> I was using it. All right. All right. Blind squirrel finds an acre and every once in a while, I got me one. It's going to be the new trout because these guys are like catfish on the bottom. These guys are infesting everywhere. Oh, Bob. Look at what Bob did. And I'm using, this is my red bass net. I put it on the boat thinking I was going to be doing more red bass fishing. This ain't my trout net. And I can't stand this net. <laughs> okay. Who let the trout out? Bob did. Bob did. Okay. He got our only speckled trout so far. And he looks like it's a keeper. So that means Bob's eating dinner tonight. It's a it's a keeper. All right, Bob. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> All right, I got a trout. And he was 200 feet from the boat on the float rig. Right where Bob just caught his. So wherever we're sitting is not where they're at. They're way to hell back there. Oh yeah. Decent size one. Alright. Alrighty, there we go. Probably skinny male. So we're burning down the house. Well, you know, it was quite chilly this morning. Not really, in my mind, not chilly. But my truck, you know, being diesel, the grid heater turned on this morning for the first time. So it gets, you know, a big gulp of hot air when it stop when it starts. And then I get in the boat and my digital Suzuki gauge here, which is, I don't know, what is it, 10 years old, is farting, doing all kinds of crazy shit. And what did I have to do? It's 6.30 in the morning and I call my crew chief, Oral Walk, all the way up in Long Island. And you know what? He fixed it. He told me what to do to fix it. Went into this like programming mode or something that I've never seen before. So what I was saying was 
I think that cold snap did something to the electronics on my uh, my gauge. It has a capacitor or something that does a memory hold. We experience around here such radical temperature changes. I mean, 50 degrees, it can be overnight. So I think the cold did it. I've had that kind of stuff happen even with sounders. Okay, well, I'm hooked up again. up has got a mangrove, and I've got a trout, I think. Yes, sir. That was only like 100 feet behind the boat. Sorry about camera angle, folks. I'm chief bottle washer, editor, producer, angler. Well, nothing to sneeze at. Ain't gonna set the world on fire, but targeted species in the boat. All right, since we caught a few trout on this spot, let's take, it to, let's take a look at the salinity level. And now the tide is down. That is hovering at six parts per thousand. Now remember what I said, you go out in the summer, you know, just at the jetties, and it's a 28. So there's the difference between all the water going in the river because of Hurricane Ian. All right, it's the end of the day. Here's Traveler Bob, and we're going to Singleton's, and we're going to have our fish fried up here. Because you know what? That's my version of these videos of catch and cook. That's my version of it. How you doing? So, service animals must wear vests. You better put on a vest. <laughs> you know I've done this before with a, a, a customer named Bill years ago. And, you know, nobody even knows. We came in here and did a catch and cook. So now we've got trout mangrove snapper. This is what Cap Murray Singleton from Singleton's Restaurant was famous for. See this? He built wooden replicas of shrimp boats. I didn't get to film this before. Wooden replicas. Look at this. I mean, here's one that's painted. I mean, just piles and piles and piles of them. An old depiction of Florida. They thought it was shaped like this, and there's Cuba down there. They didn't know how it was shaped. Pretty cool stuff here at Singleton Seafood Shack. Alrighty, we're digging in. We got some, just a pile of french fries. And a, it was a bigger pile of shrimp, uh, fish, but it's almost, it's getting devoured. Well, that's called a catch and cook. We'll see what we're gonna do tomorrow. We're doing the bottom fishing red bass thing tomorrow. All done. I can't believe I ate the whole thing. Sunrise over the Atlantic Ocean, Mayport jetties, and the Coasties, and Dave's first fish. A real super shitter. All right, we just made a move. We just made a move from the south side where we caught some croakers and no sooner put out a cut lady fish. And Bob goes, look at this rod. <laughs> and it's doubling over. We're using jigging masters and the star bull red rods. Lever drag, level wind. Hopefully this ain't a shark. Hopefully it's Brutus T. Red bass. He's a junkyard dog. Yeah, he's wrapped in it somehow. Well, that didn't take long. That didn't take long at all. It's not a super huge. Where's that line? And I'm actually using my redfish net. 
I'm using my redfish net. Alright, there we go. Okay. He's about a 20-something pounder. There's no sense measuring him or nothing. We got another one right over here. As the anchor's dragging and I need to pull up really bad. This is may pure mayhem. The anchor's constantly dragging. The current is so damn strong. There we go. Got another. I'm gonna let Bob work on unhooking this one. I got such dragophobia now. All right, we're drifting, folks. Again, pure mayhem. Got the anchor up. There's number two. Bob's just gonna turbo him. All right, we don't got time to be screwing around with every single one. All righty, folks, we're out here on the uh, south side of South Jetty, out in the sand, and Bob's hooked up to something. This one was just going right here. Yep. There he goes. Double header. Double header, folks. Double header. Double headers. Not that big. They're not that big. Hold on, Bob. Let me get this one sort of under control over here, and I'll just net that one. I can't operate the camera and do this all at the same time. Sorry, folks. They're out here. We've been here for five minutes out here on the sand. It got a little ridiculous up by the inside the jetties with the goddamn wakes and the dragon of anchor. And you know I ain't dragging anchor no more. Alright, got a red here. Bob's gonna be holding up a double header. Want to take this one, Bob? Give me the net. Take this one over here. Oh, he jizzed all over the place. All right. Okay, it's doubles. We got four already this morning. We just had to clean up the boat. You would not believe the amount of jizz everywhere. Everywhere. We're probably covered in it. They are in full spawn mode. Here's the deal. We're going to catch them. Just because we're trying to do numbers. And we're not even going to bring them in the boat. Because it is a mess. Going again. We're just going by the numbers. We don't care about big or small. We're just going to see how many can we put to the boat. Okay, bring them on over here. Number five. Bob's on number six immediately. There you go. Bob's on number six. I believe they're coming right up, right up this rip line by the numbers. Another smaller one. What is that, Bob? Six. Six. And it's 10 o'clock. Bob's on again. What number is this? Seven. All right, I said I'm not going to film every single one, but Bob's on again. Number eight. As Bob just said, another attempt at number eight. This is what makes it hell fishing inside the jetty rocks. Hamburg sued. That thing will throw a wake that'll knock your dick in the dirt. All right. All right, Bob's on again. Number nine. Okay, this one bit on my side of the boat. <laughs> we're just using cut croaker and cut ladyfish. That's all we're using for bait. Have croaker, we'll travel. 
All right, Bob's got on an absolute screamer. The absolute screamer's come off. And he just came off. All right, Bob's on again. Don't you wish you were here? All righty, that's us. We're done. I'm putting the boat on the trailer. You saw what we ended up with? I don't know, eight or ten. to clean no nothing because we can't keep any of them bull reds another October with Traveler Bob